Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So if you've been staying up to date on my Facebook post, then you know that I've been learning Cinema 4D, or at least getting better at it. And I thought I'd put together a tutorial on how to export your 3D renders out of Cinema 4D, bring them into Apple's motion, and do further compositing, whether it's color correction, doing screen replacements, etc, etc. Right now I have Cinema 4D open, and in Cinema 4D I have a model of an iPhone case. Um, that iPhone case I did not model myself, I got it from this website here, Dog Day Design. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description. Just scroll down, find the iPhone 4 zip, and click on it, and you can go ahead and download this file. So back in Cinema 4D, uh, the only thing that I've done besides uh, basically opening that file was to add a camera, a camera target, a light, and then this uh, screen. This screen is actually just a flat object in front of basically where the screen is um, so that I can track that to do a replacement inside of Apple's motion. If I uncheck it right here, you'll see it's this gray object right here. I had it uh, invisible from our uh, field of view here by having this red uh, button enabled. Anyways, when I uncheck this, basically this is what we're going to uh, tell it where in space we want to put our screen as well as this is what we're going to have our luminance mat based off of. So first things first, we need to right click on this particular object, go to Cinema 4D Tags and then select External Compositing. What external compositing does, or the tag, it basically tells um, whatever compositing software where a point of an object is in space in relation to X, Y, and Z. So as this little animation occurs, it's basically keeping track of this is where I am on X, this is where I am on Y, this is where I am on Z, and that's what that's telling it. We can keep all the default options. If you're using After Effects or exporting this to After Effects, you could export a solid by enabling this box, setting the dimensions and the color. But uh, as far as I know, Motion does not support the exporting of a solid. When you use the external compositing tag, what it's going to do is create a null object inside of uh, Motion and you're going to be able to replace it with either a still or a video, etc. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is right click on screen, go to Cinema 4D Tags and select Compositing. The Compositing tag has many uses, one of, the, one of which if we slick, click over here to the Tag uh, menu or option within the Compositing tag, we can turn off Casting of Shadows, being seen by ambient occlusion, etc. This is all for this particular object based on the Compositing tag. Next, if we click on over here to Object Buffer, the Object Buffer is going to set another render pass to render out a luminance mat based on um, this particular object. So when we click on enable here, we can set whatever buffer number we want, but we need to remember what this buffer number is because we're gonna have to set it in the render settings. So after I've enabled the object buffer, I've set whatever number I want here. It could, it's one right now, but it could be any number. I'll go over here to render settings, click on that. I'm going to go ahead and delete the object buffer here and uncheck multipass just so we can go over the options. So first things first, you want to make sure that your output file is set correctly. Well, I'm working at 1280 by 720 and I'm uh, doing a 30 frames per second frame rate. I've set my frame range to manual and set it from 0 to 89 frames which is a total of 90 frames as you can see here. So once that's set up, obviously this is going to be dependent on what your final output is or if you're compositing this into some other type of uh, footage, then you're going to want to make sure your frame rate and your resolution match. Next, when I click on over here to save, uh, before I, uh, I go through the save options, I'm going to want to enable multipass. Multipass basically is, well, multipass is several things, but one of the things that it can include is an object buffer. But when we enable this, it actually doesn't enable the object buffer by default. We have to click on multipass here and go down to object buffer. When we do so, we want to make sure this group ID is the same as the, um, as the buffer ID over here within the tag. So it's one and over here is one, so that's perfect. We'll switch back up here to the save. We want to make sure that we're saving the main render file here. We pick where we want to save it to. Um, I already have this information entered here the multi-pass, which is going to be any of the options that are selected under multi-pass, which right now it's only object buffer. We're going to want to make sure and check that. We're going to se select the location. Obviously for this particular example, we're exporting a QuickTime movie, but we could be exporting a still image sequence, um, just the same. 
Next, in our, our compositing project file, we want to click on this to select safe. If you're not seeing any of these, you can just click on the names and it will expand the selections. So we're going to want to set this to save and we're going to set this to motion. Obviously, you can export to After Effects as well. Next, we're wanna, gonna wanna include the 3D data. By including the 3D data, we're sending over the camera data, et cetera, over to Apple's motion. Once all of these things are set, I can go ahead and close my render settings and then click on render to picture viewer. When I do that, it's gonna start rendering the file. And as it's rendering the file, if we want, we can click over here on layer and we can make sure that we're rendering that uh, luminance matte. But in order to check that, we need to switch over from image to single pass. And when we do, click on object buffer and we'll see this is the luminance matte. If we click back over here, this is the render pass that's going on. Again, we can switch back to image. And then when this is done, then we can go ahead and switch back on over actually to the finder. So let me show you what this is going to render out. When I open up the finder, I've already done this. It's currently rendering to renders two right here, but I've actually already done this. And what it's going to do is it's going to create three different files. It's going to create a uh, motion uh, project file. It's going to create this uh, luminance mat. So I'll go ahead and press spacebar to show you what this looks like. And it's basically that particular object um, with a luminance channel, right? And then it's here is the main render with the animation. So over, over let's, let's go ahead and open up Apple's motion. Inside a motion, this is what, what it looks like when you double click on that project file. We have here, over here, the main video, which is located in this layer and in this group. I have a light that was over in Cinema 4D and a camera, which were brought inside of motion and set with the same settings. And down here, this screen, this is the external compositing tag. This is a location and space uh, holder. What I can do is right click on the screen here, group it, and then bring this group on top of the other layer. When I do so, you'll notice this big dark screen, which is basically just a placeholder. I can go ahead and drop anything I want in there. If I navigate over here, I have a video. I can go ahead and drag this on top of the screen, wait till the arrow becomes hooked, and then let go. When I do so, one of the things we're gonna notice if I uncheck this is it's hiding my iPhone. I'm going to go ahead and switch this to fit so we can see the whole view. I'm going to come over to, uh, I'm sorry, view and uncheck 3D grid. So when we enable this, it's filling our whole screen. Um, obviously, what we need to do is set up that, um, that alpha mat or the luminance mat. I'm sorry. So in order to do so, we'll come over here to our renders. We'll see that it's right here. This is the luminance mat that we rendered outside of Cinema 4D. When we bring it into our project, we're going to want to go ahead and bring it into the same group right here. The same group because this is a 2D group. If this is outside of a 2D group, then the camera is going to affect this um, with the camera move. And we don't want that to happen because the camera move is already embedded into this uh, render. So once it's inside here, we want to go ahead and select our uh, screen, whether we've replaced it already or not, but we're going to select uh, adding an image mask. If we go up here to object, go to add image mask, with the image mask selected and our HUD open, we can go ahead and drag and drop this into the HUD. When we do so, we'll see that now this mask is appropriated. However, the source channel is set to alpha and that's what, not what we need. We need it to be set to luminance. When we do so and we uncheck this button here, we'll notice that now we have a screen replacement going on over here. I'll go ahead and close the HUD. Next thing I'll do is select the screen. I'll come over to an inspector, select properties, and I'm going to scale this down quite a bit because if you notice, this screen was quite large. If I go ahead and press uh, play on my keyboard, you'll see that it's just playing the intro of all my tutorial videos that I've created in After Effects. So, you can have a still image file in here. If we wanted to change that, we'll go back over here to the file browser. If I go, if I go up one directory into my texture folder, we'll notice that I have a the screen, and I can go ahead and bring this over, drag until the hooked arrow appears, let go, and we'll notice that that now is replaced. If I go over to the inspector, I can adjust my um, my scale value so it fits properly. I think 14% is the correct number. I can bring the playhead back to the beginning. I can make sure I don't have anything selected here inside of uh, my uh, layers palette. I can go ahead and press play. And we'll notice that we still hear the media playing from, uh, 
from what I dropped in as far as the video is concerned. But the point is that you can now replace any screen, um, this screen with a video, a, a still image, etc., etc. We can also do further color correction to this iPhone case. We can do changes to the light, etc., inside of Apple's Motion. Well, guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, I'm not an expert in Cinema 4D yet, and I don't claim to be, but uh, definitely getting better at it, and I hope to make some more tutorials uh, to pass on tips and tricks that I learned throughout the way. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Please go ahead and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm out.